Okay, scare friends, get ready. Hold on to your seats and don't forget to grab your sides because they just might split. It's time for another episode of The Grim Show. I just saw the new opening, Jimmy. It's horrible. What are you doing? You're killing me, man. I look like some kind of a doofus out of Hee Haw or something. <laughs> Listen, you're my brother, Jimmy. You're supposed to be helping me. Hey, hey, what are you talking about? I'm helping, I'm helping. <laughs> I'm helping. You're probably sitting on the back porch right now in that stupid Panama hat you love to wear. You know I am. Yeah, I know you are. In fact, I'll bet if I look out the back, you're sitting right there. Well, Jimmy, you just sit and relax. Just sit and relax. Not like I've got a show to do. Hey, scare friends. Welcome back to the show. And welcome to the Grin Stitch Factory storage area. I guess that's what you could call it. Storage area. Because this is where Mr. Grimm puts all his masks. His personal masks. Masks he's working on. Masks are going to be shipped out in a few days. The whole shooting match. <laughs> so, I thought, since we're here... I would show you, the viewer, some of the cool masks that you don't normally get to see because they're never on the website and they're just either a part of Mr. Grimm's personal collection or thing I've, things I've made on a whim just to experiment and play and have some fun. Because Mr. Grimm likes to always experiment and play and have some fun. It's not just usually with masks though. <laughs> Okay, so let's get on with it, and let's bring out the first mask. This one's really pretty cool. It's kind of like a, a totem zombie rotted skull mask that I made a few weeks ago. It's got some hair on it, and I'll bring it out now and have a, give it a show and see what you think. Ba-boom! Look at that one. So he goes over there, and he's got all that rotted, torn part up in the head there. We spin him around. Move it in a bit closer. Now he's got the hair, okay? We'll rotate them around for you. Look at that. It's got the teeth. Those are like dental teeth in there. And you spin it around. Now, first thing you probably noticed about this mask is he's got all that kind of like it looks like exposed flesh that's uh, underneath all the burlap. That's actually a very interesting point, kids, because I'm going to explain how I did that. Because you wouldn't imagine how I got this effect. But here it goes, okay? Boom. It's an old shirt. See? An old shirt that I just weaved into the whole fabric of the mask and built over top of it to give it that burned look. And then just finessed it with paint. That's pretty cool. Okay, and like all our masks at Grim Stitch Factory, this one's no silicone, no latex. Yeah, so he's pretty cool. Maybe I'll offer him up this summer for some lucky person to buy. Okay, let's move on. And we're back. <laughs> okay, now, the one I want to show you next is one that was on Facebook not too long ago, and everyone expressed a lot of interest in it. They really liked it, but it's not a scarecrow mask. Now, if you're a very uh, keen observer, like I know a lot of you are, you've already ID'd it here in the old back frame of the uh, Grim Warehouse. <laughs> it's this one. Okay, let's pull her down. There we go. Now, this is... Uh, this is not a Grim Stitch Factory mask, and what I mean by that is, old Mr. Grim didn't make it. Nope. Old Mr. Grim has, well, to put it like Mr. Grim's mother said, you have limited skills, boy. Yeah, and I do, and I'm not up to making computer graphics and simulating things and doing that and then it, 3D printing them. So I'll, old Mr. Grim had to uh, enlist the aid of a friend. So this mask is 3D printed. Mr. Grim designed the mask, gave the images and what have you to my friend, he did all his business on the computer and then popped this one out on 3D printing. So that's pretty good. So you can see here, goes around the sides, a full face mask, and uh, it's held on by a Velcro fabric, Velcro strap. Okay? So it holds on, it's a stretchy band type of thing. Now, once Mr. Grimm got this mask, uh, of course, Mr. Grimm, that's where talent steps in. <laughs> I had to paint it, I did the paint work. I did all the lip work. There's her lip. That's a, 
It's a pretty goddamn good lip line if I do say so, my damn self. <laughs> I did her eyebrows and she's got some really nice uh, big, big, big thick eyelashes on there. And of course the wig is separate. Now, a lot of, not a lot of people emailed Mr. Grimm and said, hey, Mr. Grimm, why don't you uh, feature a mask like that on your website? Because we'd buy it. You'd buy it, wouldn't you? Of course you would. <laughs> now, the problem with that is, if I post this on my website, and site, website rather, and I start selling these, well, people are, people are just going to buy them, and then they're going to, uh, you know, mold them themselves and start making their own. I know. You, tell me about it. I know. That's what I said. And they'd start making their own, and... Mr. Grimm doesn't get a nickel of it. <laughs> so people would just steal my designs. And that's not going to happen, is it? No, no, it's not. No, no, it's not, not, not going to happen. So Mr. Grimm just keeps this one for himself. And occasionally I'll, you know, I'll get together with Mrs. Grimm and maybe throw on this mask and we'll do something crazy. <laughs> not just kidding. This is a children's show. we got to watch it, Jess. Children's watch this show. Okay, let's put her back up. All right, back she goes. I'll put her back up. Okay, that's a darn creepy mask, isn't it, kids? Reminds me of, like, Dress to Kill or something like that. Anyway, okay, let's get on with it. Now, Mr. Grimm is a big fan of all sorts of movies, and one series that Mr. Grimm really likes are the new Death Race movies, the, ones with, the one with Jason Statham and Luke Goss. I really like those, and I really wanted a Death Race Frankenstein mask. But, unfortunately, every mask I've seen on eBay or anywhere on Etsy... They're not good. They're not up to the Grimm standard. So Mr. Grimm decided to take his own hands and put skills to work. And I made my own. And here's the result. There it is. Mr. Grimm decided to make his own death race mask. Frankenstein. Okay, we'll take that off the stand there. I've got the leather neck collar and everything there. Put him back up there. Okay, so here he is. Now, you're probably asking yourself, geez, Mr. Grimm, what's that mask made out of? Well, scare friends, I can tell you, it's made out of three things, okay? It's made out of burlap, big surprise. It's made out of burlap, and it's made out of like a polyester matting, like this. They use this stuff, see that? They use this stuff in restoration of antique furniture. So it's used that, and the other thing that it's made out of, hot glue. Now, scare friends, you're probably asking yourself, Mr. Grimm, we know you have skills, but how the heck did you take burlap and polyester material and hot glue and make this? <laughs> well, that's the magic. That's the magic. That's Mr. Grimm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, scare friends, I'm going to give you a few pointers just to help you out. The core of it is all burlap. Now, it's darkened on the inside to, you know, give it a little finesse. The core is burlap. Out on the outside, all around the rim, is 16-gauge wire around the whole rim of the mask. So it's flexible, but it's durable. 16-gauge wire. That gives it support. Over that, there's more burlap. Burlap was used and knotted to get the structure of the face, the scar, the nose, the chin, the indentation down here. Now, once that was fleshed out, okay, this is when the batten came in. So this type of stuff here is really useful. Now you can cut it, you can fold it, you can do anything you want, see? Now what Mr. Grimm did was Mr. Grimm would take pieces of this batten here and he'd pull it. Now, check this out. See that? It's coming apart like spider webs. It's really fluffy. So I'd take pieces like this that are nice and fluffy. I don't know if it'll focus on that. Then, on the core mask, when I was building it, I would take it and I would glue it onto the mask so it stays put, with just for the sake of argument, like this, okay? So then I'd put a bunch of strands and fluffy pieces and I'd stick them like the dunk, the dunk, the dunk, and get a whole layered patch. Then what I would do to get the texture is a hot glue gun. I'd squeeze hot glue right on to that fluffy stuff. 
and the heat of the hot glue and the heat of the tip I used to sculpt texture. That's all the texture here. See that? That's all done with this fluffy stuff stuck to the mask and then carefully hot glue textured. It's an interesting technique, scare friends, because hot glue is really cheap. You can buy the, now I mean, this is a really good gun, but you can buy any gun that's really hot. I recommend high heat guns. And then you can actually play with it and you can sculpt your own texture. And in the end, it actually comes off kind of like a metal look. Now, the actual paintwork was done with acrylics. Okay, so we got acrylics in there to give it that paint iron rustic look. And it comes off looking pretty darn good. Fits on like this. There we go. I'm Frankenstein. It's pretty good, eh? <laughs> Maybe I should do a whole episode as Frankenstein. Next on the Grim Stitch Factory, Frankenstein is going to show you the latest masks. Let me pull out a final mask, and this one is what we call a hybrid mask, and that's where I take an existing Grim Stitch Factory mask, in this case, the Field Creeper, and I kind of modify it and play with it and come up with something new, just because, well, that's what I do. <laughs> okay, here it is. A modified Field Creeper. Now this one, at some point this year, is going to be sold because somebody's going to buy it because it's not one of my personal masks. This is one I made as a, just a demo, but it looks pretty cool. So this is based on the Field Creeper. On the side, it's got dreadlocks. And they're in there. Good quality there. It's got dreadlocks. It's got the evil stitching over the eyes. Now, if you've noticed the mouth, the mouth has tons of creepy stitching. Let me zoom in there. Look at that. You'll see the difference right away from the traditional field creeper masks. This one's got interwoven twined stitching. Look at that. Hard as can be. Sturdy as can be. Just like every good stitch factory mask. And just like I tell everybody at the Grim Stitch Factory, when they buy a mask here, all these masks, they're handmade. There's no latex, there's no silicone, none of that. It's all handmade, 100% organic burlap. They're lightweight, but look how durable that is. Durable, lightweight, you can't beat it, and they breathe very well. How do I know they breathe very well? Because I'm wearing one. And if you think this is the first take of the show I've done today, pff, you're kidding yourself. <laughs> anyway, so that's a, a modified hybrid field creeper. Uh, look for it maybe on my Facebook page or something. I'll probably end up selling him closer to Halloween. And uh, yeah, he's, he's really cool. Okay, we'll put him back. Back you go, Mr. Field Creeper. Okay, everybody. Thanks for tuning in once again. Mr. Grimm really appreciates it. I hope you had fun. I hope you liked what you saw. And uh, the time was well spent for you. Thank you for your patronage to the Grim Stitch Factory. We really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And coming soon, we'll have another video for you very shortly. But in all fairness, Mr. Grimm is really busy these days. I've... That's probably the reason why I haven't had too many videos up. Because I just finished an order for Universal Studios Theme Park. Biggest order I ever had. Now, I'd like to show you some pictures and examples of what I did. But unfortunately, I can't. For legal reasons. <laughs> anyway, scare friends, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you real soon at the Grim Stitch Factory.